I'm John Strohmeyer, and this is the Five Star Council Podcast. The market for legal services is shifting, and lawyers who don't adapt will be left behind. This podcast gives you a competitive edge in today's market by sharing the client service lessons you probably didn't learn in law school or in law practice. Let's start the show. Hey, Five Star listeners. Before we start, I want to tell you about our amazing sponsor, Smith AI. Smith AI is a virtual receptionist service for small businesses with a specialty in working with solo and small law firms. I signed up with them within weeks of starting my firm because they are affordable for even the smallest solo practice. Their friendly receptionists respond to potential clients in Spanish or English, screen and schedule new leads, and can even take payments. And now they're answering calls 24 hours a day. So even when you're asleep, they're still working. Even beyond the phone, they've got live agents and chat bots ready to capture leads on your website, by text, and by Facebook Messenger. Smith's friendly gatekeepers can staff your front line so you can work uninterrupted. You can finally have the peace of mind that while you're working, you're not missing out on future work. Plans start at just $70 a month for calls and $100 a month for chats. Smith AI is offering a free trial, and our podcast listeners get an extra $100 discount code with promo code 5STAR. That's F-I-V-E-S-T-A-R. Sign up and learn more at www.smith.ai. Don't let another day go by. Try Smith AI. Hey, it's John, and welcome back to the 5 Star Council podcast. This week, we're going to be talking about the four stages of business. So we have a lot of things that we think about in terms of how you run your business as a law firm. And one of the things people will get confused about is, well, I've got a business. It's either an on or an off switch, right? We're either in business or we're not. And the reality is we're going to go through stages as business owners where we're learning and growing and we're focused on different things at different times in our business life. Now, what we're going to talk about today is going to be tailored more for law firms because as a law firm, Our firms are going to grow, and there's kind of an upper limit to any practice group size. Ultimately, you know, you can have firms of hundreds or thousands of lawyers, but those aren't one firm directed at one task. Those bigger firms, once you grow beyond 20 or 30 people, you're really starting to look at multiple practices doing multiple things. So when we're thinking about this as the size of your business or your law firm. Think about it as your specific expertise-based law firm, even if it's part of a larger law firm. So if you're in a firm of 30 people and there are two different practice groups, so you've got a transactional side with 15 people and you've got a litigation side with 15 people, we think about that in terms of two 15-person law firms or two smaller groups because they're operating under different expertise basis. They're not going to be acting as a single firm with one expertise that they're delivering on. And this is not to say that it's n- that you shouldn't have multiple practice groups in a firm if that makes sense for you and your partners. It's to say, let's think about this in terms of how we've structured our particular law firm and our our expertise so that we're delivering it in the best way to our clients. So as a refresh of how we think about all of our service, remember that businesses, whether it's a law firm, Disney, or Lego, sell, every business sells a product. And that product is going to be composed of three different components. There will be a physical component where clients are paying for a thing they can pick up and touch. They were going to pay for a technical component. So this is going to be the knowledge work that clients will pay for. Do the thinking for me. And finally, there's a service aspect that clients are paying for. And that service is how the business is going to deliver their physical and technical product. And so when you mix all three of those components together, the physical, the technical, and the service components, that is what clients are paying for. We've got three different components, and so we've got the physical component, technical component, and service component. We're thinking about these in kind of three different levers we can pull for each. So in terms of a physical component, the amount of stuff you give to somebody, how much are you giving to them? Second, the perceived value. Maybe you want to crank down on that and increase the value of something that you're giving to your your guests or your clients or your customers. And finally, the uniqueness of whatever item. Is it possible for them to get that somewhere else or is it really you're the only option to get this from? So in terms of uniqueness, 
there's a story about how the Chicago Cubs wanted to reward some of their season ticket holders. And so they made some Bluetooth speakers with the used and what would have otherwise been discarded benches from the outfield. There's no other way you're going to get those Bluetooth speakers with that particular assembly. So they really cranked hard on a unique item for their uh, for their season ticket holders. When it comes to our technical components, three things to think about. Having knowledge base, so knowing the rules for the technical component. The second level up is skills or how do we actually apply that knowledge. And finally, for our expertise, this is where we as lawyers, as well as doctors, CPAs, engineers want to get. People are coming to us not because we know the rules. They can find those rules on Google and not for our skills because those skills are getting to be where they are really a commodity and almost anybody can acquire those the skills or being able to get somebody to complete a task for you. We're getting to that expertise level. The expert level is where clients come to us because we're going to do the thinking for them. We're going to guide them. We're going to provide accountability to them in exchange for their dollars in a way that someone who is just knowledgeable or has a skill set can't. So in the context of a law firm, being the person to not only know what the rules are and how to form a company, but also knowing why you're going to pick any particular entity, knowing how to guide some of the decisions that go along with it. It's not just a, hey, come to me and we can form an entity for you, but come to me, we can get you the right type of entity and not just any old entity that you think you need. Why? We're the technical service providers. We are there to provide that to clients. And that is what they are paying us for. We should be there to help guide those decisions. If they don't need us for the guidance, then we as lawyers really aren't serving much of a use and we sh we really shouldn't be part of that decision. Finally, service component. This is where, where businesses are going to make their money because people want to spend their time well. And they want to spend their time with that company. So we're not out so outsourcing the doing or the thinking or the manufacturing like a technical or physical component business. In a service business, clients are coming to us because they want to enjoy their time spent. So three levers we can pull on there are people, you know, how friendly are they, how empathetic, how do they behave, the quality of our service. So is it fast? Is it exclusive? You know, do we have the folded towel swans? on the bed and the chocolates on the pillow, those sorts of things. And finally, and mo probably most importantly, consistency, making sure that we're doing the same thing over and over and over again in the same way. And so when we think about all of these, what it really comes down to is we're going to focus on different levers, these nine different levers inside of these three different components at different times in our business. And that's going to be reflected in how we're setting up and growing our business. So as I said, today is all about four stages of business. And I want to think about and have an image in your head of how you're growing this business from it being just you to you running a team of 25 people. And even if your goal with your practice isn't to have 25 people, maybe you don't want it to be any bigger than 10 or any bigger than four. Know that these are the things that you would start coming through and start having to grow through. So the first stage and what I'm going to call stage zero or business level zero, because we're going to be starting out basically at nothing. Well, at this point, the only person there really is you. You are the only one there. You're going to have to do everything. Your goal truly at this point is to survive. So if we're going to put a metaphor in place, I want you to think about you standing at the end of a dock in the middle of the ocean. And somebody comes and whether it's somebody throwing you out of your old job or you jumping off the end of that dock and jumping into the ocean, one way or another, you're leaving the safety of that dock and then you're out there in that ocean by yourself. It is sink or swim time. So it's just you and you have got to figure out how not to drown. So your goal when it's just you and when it's just your little practice area all by yourself, your goal is to survive. Business at that point, where is it coming from? What is your source? Well, if you're a true solo just working for yourself, possibly straight out of law school, you're going to have family and friends that are probably going to send you business. But if you're thinking about this, well, I work inside of a, another law firm, what does this mean? Well, your source of business, you know, as you're learning how to do things, is going to be the partners who are giving you work. So what are they doing? How are they feeding you? That's your source of business. And at this point, because it's just you, 
the other thing we're going to think about is how many layers of management are there? The answer is none. It's you. You know, you're there at the bottom. And so you're there to get everything done. What it also means is you're, you may not have any stages to delegate through and you're doing everything. Something else to think about, well, what do you know about your business? What kind of data, key performance indicators, KPIs are you looking at? And at this point, really, it's sink or swim. You don't have time for data. We're not even going to worry about it, that sort of thing. So stage one, think about this as being tossed off the end of that dock into the ocean. Your job to get out of true solo status is to really grow the business to the point where you know what you're doing and you are not drowning. So it's get clients in, take care of them any way you can. Now you're going to progress beyond that stage and get to kind of solo plus. So this is what I'm going to call the second stage of business. We're going to call it business level one. So when we got tossed out, that was business level zero, but it's now going to be business level one where you're rocking it along. You know what you're doing. You may even have some people working for you, but you probably don't have many. So you've gotten to the point where you have learned how to survive as a practice. So you know how to get money in, you know how to pay bills, you know how to pay other people and work people through your system. But at this point, really you're, you're out there in the ocean, you are swimming by yourself and you may have one or other two other people who are along for the ride. Now, at this point in our metaphor, and I'm going to keep stretching this metaphor as far as I can, when you're swimming, you're bringing these people along. Think about yourself as the, as the swimmer, and there are people who are tied to you. They're doing what you tell them to, but ultimately, they are only receiving direction from you. They're not really thinking too far ahead. They are doing exactly what you say. We had a few items we thought about before in stage zero. So, one, we've already addressed the size, and two, we've talked about delegation. Now we want to think about, well, what sort of data do you have about your practice? Well, at this point, you've got some data. You know a little bit more about what's going on and whether or not things are working. And I want you to think about this as digital data in the sense, not that you can store it in the cloud, but it's on or off. So yes or no data. So did we get a client? Yes or no. Did we get paid for this matter? Yes or no. Did I get to take any money home? Yes or no. We're not worried so much about the values or the numbers. We'll get to that later. But at this point, really, you've got data that tells you whether or not you can do anything. And when I was going back and thinking of these stages, and we'll have an episode with Adam Anderson on the podcast soon, depending on the release dates, this live stream may be in your feed before or after that. So if you're getting a little confused or want to hear a different perspective on this, go find the episode with Adam Anderson, and he will be able to give you his version of this because a lot of this is adapted from him. So... At this point, you've got data that's on or off. You just know, did I get paid? Uh, can I make payroll? You're really not thinking any deeper than that because you still don't have time for it. So at this point, the other thing to think about is your source of business. So before we were looking at work essentially being handed to us by people who knew us already. So family or friends or partners who uh, were employing us as their employees to work for them. What we're working on here, one of the things that we really want to focus on is our consistency of our service. So to kind of grow out of level one and get to the next level, we really are focused on doing the same things again and again, because until we can get some basic consistency down, it doesn't matter. Like getting tracking data beyond that isn't going to help because it's going to be different every time. So really when we're moving out of level one, and on to what I'm going to call level 10, we're really focused on how can I do the same things over and over. And what this means is we're going to be starting to narrow down our focus. We have to focus the things we do because we can't take in everything that comes in the door. If you're an estate planner, that means you probably shouldn't be doing criminal defense products, liability, and personal injury. You've got to focus because you're not going to get consistency by taking in a wide range of tasks. So if we think about this again, uh, going all the way to back to the beginning, stage one or level business level zero, getting tossed into the cold ocean by yourself, you're fighting for survival. Once you can successfully not drown, you're going to be at business level one. 
and you're going to start growing through that level. And you're going to keep growing until you get to business stage three or business level 10. And I know I'm mixing uh, mixing numbers, but the reason is, you know, you're going from zero to one and then you're going one to 10. And what you should be thinking about is that level three, we're scoring it as a 10 because what you did to get from zero to one, you can't stay at that same pace. If you, you've got to increase and change how you're working to adapt so you can grow to a level 10. So think about it as like a logarithmic scale. Things are going to go at one level and then we're going to keep increasing, but we've got to increase at a faster rate if we ever want to hit that level 10. So level 10, we're start, starting to think about our practice as its own small firm. Before we were, we had staff, maybe one or two people, but really at small firm stage, you're going to start seeing this once you get to about eight or so, maybe around 10 people. So we've tripled in size from that level one because what we're doing now is we've got eight or so people, there's a lot going on, and you as the head of this firm, you really need to start thinking about how things get done because it's more than just consistency. You're running out of hours. Before, when it was just you and one or two people, you could kind of manage everything going on without too much else. But at this point, for you to grow into that level three score business score 10 you have got to get more things off your desk so you can focus on being the expert because if you're getting distracted from this with the minor tasks every day this is going to be a problem like ultimately lawyers aren't getting paid to do the basic tasks or running payroll or any of the behind the scenes stuff we're hired to move the needle for clients and what that means is that we're going to have to focus on doing just that how do we deliver our greatest value to clients? And anything that doesn't fit within that, we've got to delegate that. So when we're moving out of, you know, that solo plus into the small firm level, we've got our staff, but ultimately we can't have them act as a drag on us. So instead of us just swimming and dragging them along, what we're doing in this small firm section is we're building a platform. Instead of thinking of it as a platform, think of it as a raft. You're building this raft from the pieces around you and your staff are all going to be on this raft so that you can start moving forward together. And it's not just you dragging them along, but you're all pulling in the same way together. Now, before we talked about the size, think about the data that you can start getting at this level of business. You know, when your business score, when you've scaled up and you're now at 10, well, what's happening is that you are doing things consistently and you're focused on your expert status, how you can deliver value to clients in a way that they are looking for. You know, they don't care that you can get the coffee or order copy paper. They're looking for you to come in and make a difference. So at this level, your data is going to be much better. You're going to know more about who your clients are and how you can help them. So knowing then that your data is going to go from that digital on-off data to being more analog of, you know, is it a you know, we're, we're getting percentages of these types of clients. This lead source, we know we're going to get this level of, or we can expect that clients are 50% to sign up with us if they come from referral source one, and they're 100% likely to sign up with us if they come from referral source two. So knowing that we've got to start getting deeper into our data to progress to that level. At this level, you're going to be in a place where you're probably delegate, you have to be delegating to grow through this. But what you're looking at is instead of it just being you to the direct report, you're probably going to have somebody else who's reporting to one of your direct reports. So we now have three layers of management. You at the top as executive, then one layer of direct reports to you. And then below that, some people who are going to report to the people who report to you. They're not going around that. They're not reporting directly to you. They've got a layer to protect you from having to do everything. Again, as the expert, you've got to be isolated from the tasks that you shouldn't be handling. So you don't need to get in the middle of doing things. You need to be delegating not only down to one level below you, but to a level below that person so you can leverage all of this system that you're putting together. So we then move on to kind of stage four or business level 100. Again, what we're going to see, we're not doing a simple linear progression. We're going from zero to one and then from one to 10 and then from 10 to 100. Now, 100 may not ultimately be the, the full realization of a law firm, but it, conceptually what this looks like is you're pulling yourself out of the business more and more 
to where at business level 100, think of yourself as just the shareholder. All you're doing is making top level decisions. You're not even working in the business anymore. As a lawyer, it gets harder and harder to do this. So we may never reach that level. And when we talk to Adam Anderson, you'll see that he's envisioning that top level, what he calls business stage four. You really are the absentee shareholder there to make some decisions and guide people as they work for you. As a lawyer, we're ultimately responsible for what happens in our firm. So we're going to want to think about that, but it may not be possible for us to be truly removed all the way. And that's okay. Just it, it's a model, like all models, it's going to break down at some point. So at this point, we've taken our raft, you know, extending the metaphor again, you got tossed into the ocean, you learned how to swim, your staff was starting to drag you down. So rather than being the sole swimmer dragging, you built a raft. Finally, what we're looking at is more of an ocean going vessel where you've got your staff pulling oars along with you. There might be some small sails representing you know, conceptually the things like software processes and other things that help make sure that you're consistently delivering. But what we're doing at this point, we've got a team that's working together. You have capitalized on your expert status and you've built in underlying consistency. This is the point in the business where you've got great data and you can find out the things you need to tweak. And ultimately, this is where you can start tweaking on your own client service. And I said before, Service is one of those things where this is how we deliver our physical and technical product. And clients are only going to come to us as lawyers for our technical expertise. It doesn't matter how good our physical process, product or physical components are. It doesn't matter. Clients aren't going to hire us for our fancy offices or the high-end coffee that we serve. They're going to hire us for our technical skills. They're not going to hire us for uh, at the first for our service beyond knowing that we can get the job done. Again, we're hired to be the technical experts and we need to remember that. So no amount of spending on physical or service components is going to ultimately make you into some business that people just want a thing from. So clients aren't gonna come to us for our drink menu or our omelet menu or the steaks we have at night if you happen to be there. Those are nice things, but nobody's gonna hire you just because you have access to something like that. Similarly, no matter how good your experience is as a law firm, clients aren't going to hire you for that without hiring you to also do something. So if you needed a divorce, sure, you'll compare law firms based on the service that they can deliver. But ultimately, you're not going to go hire a family law firm to get to experience their service without needing that divorce as a precondition. And so we want to always keep that in mind. We can pull the lever hard on making our service and physical components better, but it's never going to be able to eclipse the value that we deliver as technical experts. And so the critical thing to remember in this model is we'll focus first on consistency, making sure that we can deliver this again and again. You know, we're not as focused in that solo and solo plus stage of being the technical experts. We're focused on consistently delivering, making sure we've got some basic process to get things out the door. It's once we go to that small firm, business level 10 and above, that we are focused on being the expert because that's why people are going to hire us. If they aren't hiring us as the expert, then we're in a different type of competition where we're competing with people based on our price and maybe very little else. And so that's where we don't want to waste our money. We don't want to start thinking about the marketing gimmicks of, let me send you Starbucks gift cards, or if I uh, send you some cool swag, then you'll hire me. That's not even part of your product. That's you spending money to try and lure somebody in. No, we, this business level 10 to when we're here at the small firm stage, what we're focused on is developing our expertise. And it's once that we're that recognized expert that we can really get out and we are in our own little ocean, we're moving along because we don't have as much competition with other lawyers. You know, we've got to be more than just a replacement value lawyer in the eyes of the market for us to really grow. So it's developing that expertise. And if you can do the same job that anybody else can, why would they hire you and why would they pay more? They wouldn't. So it's when we're really humming along that we're the experts that then that's when we want to start focusing on the higher level service of we're sending the surprise gifts to clients, making things nicer. And if you get this out of sorts, if you start thinking, well, no, I'm going to do the Zappos level service where we sit down 
and we're going to, everybody's supposed to stay on the phone for up to 12 hours with a client if they need that. You can't afford that before you're the expert. You've got to be able to focus on getting business done. And if you're focused on getting business on these unreasonable service goals held up by venture backed companies that can afford to spend this money, you're, you're looking at the wrong thing. We've got to be focused on being the expert. And by being the expert, we can then grow to a point where we can improve the service touches. But before we get to be that expert, we really have to just focus on consistency and getting things done so that we've got a working business. Once we're there, we can improve and think about how we can make our firm better. But it's not until then that we can actually do that. So I'm going to close things down. Let's go back through everything, kind of bring this back. Here are what we sell, three components, the physical component of how much of a thing we're selling. Is it zero of something when they hire a law firm? They're hiring us for zero steaks and omelets and drink menus. Uh, for perceived value, how many dollars would they be willing to pay for this? So if we're able to put something together, regardless of our cost, what would the client be willing to pay for it? You know, if we can put together that iPod and send it to them with all of the knowledge that we've got, there's going to be a higher perceived value that for that. Then uniqueness of that physical product. You know, how many of these are available in the universe? That's what we're going to think about. Technical component, the second component, where, and this is where lawyers live. We're going to go from our knowledge base, so what we learned in law school as the basic rules, to skills when we get out into practice and actually doing, implementing things. So how do we do this? And finally, expertise. Which skill are we employing? Which method are we going to undertake to achieve the result for the client? Finally, the service component, so how we're delivering those physical and technical components, looking at our people, so they're the ones who deliver our service, the quality of that service, so how are we delivering it? And finally, the consistency, how often are we actually delivering at that level? We roll all those together, and that's what our business is selling. We then look at the four stages of our business, so again, stage one in, in Adam Anderson's method, or level zero in my thoughts on this. You're tossed into the ocean and your job is just sink or swim. We have no real data at this point because we're focused on surviving. We'll grow to business level one. So we've gone from zero to one. We're learning to swim. We are out there on our own. We may have a staff member or two, but we're really swimming in the current by ourselves. We're going to then have to upgrade what we're doing and grow to business level three. Sorry, business level 10. And this is where we're building out that conceptual raft for our business. We're capitalizing on the consistency we built so that we can focus on our expertise. And we're going to focus on that expertise until we can really break through and be in, a, in that category where people know when to call us. And it's not just folks off the street, but our competitors are actually picking up the phone and sending us business because we have something that they don't have. It's that expert status in a particular niche. Finally, we're going to be growing towards possibly a mythical business level 100, or as Adam put it, business level four, where we're going to put things in a place where we can really, we're not, we are less hands-on. We may be working a little bit in the business, but ultimately we're delivering for our clients on a highly tuned basis. And we can really focus on that service aspect again. You know, at the beginning, we just needed to get the basic consistency down. But ultimately, once we've grown beyond that continuing existence of the business, and we're really working on that expert status, we can focus on tweaking how we improve the service, but it's never going to be in excess of our own technical expertise. So think about it this way. You've got to get it, got to get your technical expertise up so that you can increase your service. And if you start cranking too high on service, but your technical service can't support it, you know, if you're just a replacement level attorney, but you've got a drink menu and an omelet menu for guests who arrive first thing on Friday mornings. It's out of sorts. You're overselling what you can do because you're, the reason people come to you is not that drink menu. They're coming to you for that technical expertise. So next week we'll be back. We probably will have a recorded show, but we'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks so much for listening. You can find more info on us and get your free white paper on client service at fivestarcouncil.com. You can get in touch with me at john at fivestarcouncil.com. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe wherever fine podcasts are found and leave us a review wherever you can.